Hello everyone, welcome to part two where we'll be looking at UI plugins. So if you've got code that you only want to run in the UI, you've got a couple of options. So if we jump back to our init.py from our startup script, you can do this and you can say import configuration and then say if configuration get katana ui mode then and then you run your code and it will only run if you are in the ui and you can use this anywhere in any of your functions as well so if you've got a specific part of your code you only want to run in the ui you can use this now the other option is you know all of your code is just going to be for the UI as you can use the UI plugins. And that's what we're going to do. So let's just get rid of this and go back to our folders and jump into UI plugins and to make a new file and let's just call this UI plugins dot I. Let's pop into that. So what we want to do is say from Katana import callbacks and also import our logging again. Again, say log equals logging get logger at what we'll call this one UI plugins. We'll say log.info and we'll say registering oh, put it into a quote I mean registering backdrop shortcuts to key B and we're going to use our lovely callbacks again add callback and this one callbacks dot type going to be on startup complete and we'll do back drop shortcut as the function that's going to run on startup complete just tidy this up a little bit And now let's write our function. And again, it would just have object hash for this one. So there wouldn't be any other arguments that would be passed through for a startup complete. Previously, we had it where it was on scene load and have a file name. Now we've already covered the code for how to add the backdrop shortcut. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in here, but I'll go over it quickly as well, just as a refresh. So we're going to import the UI4 and also we're going to import Qt widgets from the UI4 manifest. What we want to do is find the top tab of the node graph. And if that tab exists, then we're going to get the menu bar of that tab. And we have our text that we're going to find in our menu bar for the action. And what we'll do is we'll say find children of type Qt widgets dot action. And then we'll cycle through all of these actions and find out if the text matches. If it does, then we want to basically append the current text with a tab and a B so that we'll be able to see that it is B for the shortcut in the menu. And now we want to create an ID for our, menu, uh, our shortcut. So we use the generate action ID from the keyboard shortcut manager and you just give it the name, so backdrop and it'll make an ID for you. And then what we can do is register the keyboard shortcut. We give it the ID, we give it the name, we give it the shortcut key we give it the function that's going to run when you press down that key. 
the function that you when you release which i'm going to say is none and then any arguments you want to pass to that shortcut so now we have our fit backdrop function that we're passing this action argument so we've got our fit backdrop and there's our args now arg0 would be our tab and then args1 would be the arguments we've put in here which is going to be our action and then all we need to do is trigger the action and it will create the backdrop it's pretty simple uh, let's now do another callback so we'll say log.info again and now we're going to say registering our context menu and then this is going to be the same but instead of backdrop shortcut we're going to say register context menu now it's a good idea to split up these functions even though they're both on startup complete because you'll be able to see which callback is causing an issue so let's now write our register context menu function same object hash and now we want to import some things so we'll say from ui4 i'm going to get the form master master and we'll say node action delegate one from the node action delegate to import the base node action delegate and we also want to get the register action delegate and we want to import the qt core and qt widgets from the ui4 manifest so we need the nodes that we're going to add our context menu to so we'll say nodes equals and we'll make a list called group and variable enabled group We'll cycle through our node so we say for node in nodes do and we'll say uh oh actually we want to global our log so we can log this as we're going along we'll say log.info adding new context menu to and then the node format and add our node to that and then let's add it so we'll say register action delegate and we'll give it the node name we want to register it to and then we need to pass a delegate so we'll say my node action delegate and now we need to make this node action delegate class so pop back up here make our class called my node action delegate And we're going to make it from the base node action delegate so this now when you have a node action delegate uh, it will have two functions one for the 
context menu when you right click on a node and another one for the wrench menu. And we want to append a new action to those. So we'll say add to context menu and we'll pass it the menu and the node. And we'll say menu dot add action. And then we want to add a class to this called create input and output action and give that the menu and the node. And we want to do exactly the same code for the wrench icon. So I'll just change that to add to wrench menu. And now we need to create this class here for the create input and output action, which will be an action. So Class create input and output action, and that's going to be of type Qt widgets Q action. The first thing we want to do is initiate this so. Do self, parent, and node. And then what we want to do is give it a name. So what you'll see in the action name will be create an input and output and let's parent this to the menu we also want to set the node there so we can call it again in another function and we'll say if node then self dot triggered connect so what's going to happen when you click on it and it will run the triggered function almost there this also has a set enabled but we want it to be enabled if the node is not none None, none, and it is not locked. So we'll say self dot node is locked. Tree. So you don't want to be able to have this menu be triggered if it's not none, if it's not locked. Finally, let's write this triggered. Function, so we get our node from our self dot. Let's call it our node. So we now need to get the input port, the output port and then get the send and return ports inside and connect them together. So let's do that. So we'll make the input port first. Input port equals node dot add input port. Call this I zero. Make an output port. Add output port. Let's send 
No, send account equal no dot get send port and the input for get name so we've given the add input port name i0 but if you were to run this again then it would automatically change it to i1 because it is already in i0 so we want to then get the input port name because it might not be i0 at that point okay and then we'll get the return port And then let's connect these. So we'll say return port dot connect we'll return and a set port. Now when you trigger this action from this menu, you can run anything you like. So you can add things either to the right click menu of any node, or you can add something to the wrench menu of any node. So this adds quite a lot of extra things that you can do. Let's uh, save this now and let's see if I've made any mistakes. So, going to close down Katana and going to run it again. We should again be able to see our callbacks be registered here. Add a new context menu for group and variable enabled group. So let's make a group node. You see there's no input port or output port. We right click. Now oh, it's errored. An attribute error occurred. Okay. Let's have a look at that. Oh. Okay, so I just put that one line too far so let's save that let's try that again so we'll make the group node again and there you go we now have our create input and output options we click that and we get those and we make a variable enabled group same deal and then we can also do the same thing from oh and tricon is not working let's have a look at that oh forgot uh this needs also hints so we'll say hints is equal to none okay oh, i love this code in malarkey's eh i'm just checked that the wrench icon now works so we'll go up here Add input port and output port. Yeah. And lastly, let's see if we now have our fit backdrop node to selected nodes shortcut working. So we should just be able to hit B. And there we go. We have our shortcut. Everything is working.